Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Hebrews chapter 5 verse 10, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 9, and Mark chapter 2 verse 10. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for your holiness. Thank you for showing us what we need to have understanding and wisdom about in you. Lord God, we praise you. We give you thanks and honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 10. Being designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. All right, so we know that this is speaking of Christ, right? He was a high priest just like um, in the same fashion as Melchizedek. Why? Well, because Christ um, was not of Levitical, the Levitical, the Levite bloodline. And so he was of the tribe of Judah, right? And that's how Melchizedek was. He, he came before the tribes were designated. He came um, as a, a high priest because God said so right? Because God made him a high priest. And so in that same way, um, Jesus is in that same category. He is a designated high priest. And that means that they are high priests forever, not in the temporal sense because of blood relation, but in the eternal sense of a high priest and so Christ is now a high priest in the heavenlies right not for the replica which is on earth but in the heavenlies in the eternal sense and so in the real um temple right the real um area in which God is all right so he was designated by God as that it says being designated by God as high priest after the order of Melchizedek. All right. And so the second verse that the Lord gave me was Ephesians chapter three, verse nine. And to bring to light for everyone, what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who creates all things. All right. And so um, here Paul is just talking about the fulfillment of what Christ had done and, and his job to to explore those things and and how Christ came to to give us these eternal riches, right? These riches that are so much farther beyond what we could imagine. And so um here it says and to bring to light for everyone, what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God? All right. And so God has things that were enveloped in mystery, right? That needed to be revealed, but it had to be revealed in the fullness of time, right? Um, the enemy, like for instance, one example of that would be that if the enemy knew, Satan knew that, um, Christ's martyrdom, Christ's death, um, Christ's crucifixion would cause him to become um, everything in his role that he was supposed to be to fulfill his role, his eternal role um, as high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek, then he would have never wanted to crucify him. He would have done everything to quell that and try to most like, I'm saying most likely, he would not have been trying to play into the purposes of God. So he didn't have a, an understanding of the scriptures, of the revelation that Christ's sacrifice would bring. And many people did not. Many people thought that when Christ came, he came to set up his kingdom right then and there. And so because um, God had a better plan, God had a better way, but he shrouded it in mystery, he was able to easily um, fulfill and thwart any plan of attack against it. And also just, you know, 
do it in the fullness of the timing that he wanted to do it in. And so, you know, nothing is beyond our God. He is so much farther ahead than all of us. And so he He hid these things until the fullness of time, right? And so he didn't just hide them from man, right? He hid them from the Elohim. He hid them from the heavenly beings, the authorities and the powers um, of heaven, right until they're they're revealing until they're the fullness of time and so it says to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things and so Christ created all things Christ was um um the the final um, authority he was given great authority right um god had so many things you know that he wanted to get to us but he had to cover it up for a while right he had to to wait for it to be revealed right and so now that this fullness of time has come in Christ has been revealed he's he's been crucified he he's been risen from the dead our sins are atoned for now he he can can cause us to walk in that that fullness as well amen all right and how does he have the authority to do that well because he's designated as a high priest forever right he, he is a part of the administrations of heaven Right. And so um, Mark chapter two, verse 10 is the third verse that the Lord gave me, but that you may know that the son of man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic. And so, you know, um, he well, Christ was able to forgive sins. Right. And we know that um, if Christ um, didn't have God with him, he wouldn't have been able to manifest these out, 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 I shouldn't say outlandish, but just extreme miracles that no one else could have done. Right? No one could cause, you know, a person to, who's been lame from birth to be healed immediately and just rise, take up his bed and walk. Right. And, you know, people can't do things like this unless the power of God is in them. And so um, in order to to prove that he did have that authority to to stand as as basically as God um, in, in a way of subtly revealing these things to men without them. Um, without it being outright you know because Christ would have just said it outright people just would have been crazy people might have been trying to stone him and stone the disciples and do all sorts of things so he would do these things that were shrouded in mystery right and and he would say things that were subtle yet very powerful extreme and and almost to where people would think that they were blaspheming but because he was God, it was not blasphemous. And so they had to think like, how could this man say that um, uh, someone else's sins are forgiven unless he's God? Like God can't, you can't just say things like that. And it was his subtle way of showing them, I am God right? I am, I am the one who was in the burning bush, right? I, he is the one who was from heaven. And so he was shining a light for all to see, but it was shrouded in mystery. And so that's why he would say your sins are forgiven. And also he would say, um, rise and take up your bed and walk, right? Because if you say one, if you say rise, take up your bed and walk, you know, men can operate in the authority of healing every now and again, a miracle can occur, right? But if you also accompany that with the fact that he's saying um, your sins are forgiven, do you think God would support that healing if he wasn't who he said he was? Do you think God will restore completely to his, to his, fullness in his, his state um to the 
things that he should have been from birth, um, this thing. No, he would not have supported that if Christ wasn't who he said he was, right? But not only that, he he forgave them of their sins. He also healed their bodies. And it was a revealing, it was a revelation to the people that Christ was Lord in his fullness designated by God as a high priest in the order of Melchizedek, right? That mystery that was hidden for ages in God who created all things. He was the light. He was the light of the world. Hallelujah. And they they could not comprehend him. The darkness could not comprehend him. They couldn't see, right? And so he had this great authority, but he did not reveal it um, openly for all to see. He hid it, right? He hid it in mystery. He hid it in the parables. He hid it in a way that, you know, was, was to make those who were the sons of God be revealed, right? It, it wasn't through their flesh that they would comprehend these things. It was through the spirit of God, the drawing of the spirit of God. And so God has a way of doing things. And he's He's about to reveal many things to many people, things that people have been clinging to and holding on to and and waiting for he's about to reveal it to them to the ones who who are still holding fast right to him to those who have received him as lord amen all right and so let's just look at the three verses again really quickly hebrews 5 10 being designated by god a high priest after the order of melchizedek and Ephesians 3, 9, and to bring to life for everyone what is the plan of the mystery, hidden for ages in God who created all things. In Mark chapter 2, verse 10, but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic. And we know what he said to the paralytic. What did he say? Rise, take up your bed and walk. He healed him and he also forgave him of his sin. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for these mysteries that are revealed through your precious servant, through through Christ Jesus, death, burial, and resurrection, through the fullness of time, through all of the goodness that you have stored up, the great riches in you, Lord God. We love you. We praise you. We ask you to forgive us for our sins. Help us to receive this great mystery. Help us to believe in you. Help us to walk by faith and and receive what it is that you are reaching down and handing us. We're about to receive an opportunity and we love you. We Thank you that we receive it now. We believe it. We hold fast to your hand. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Um, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart make you my lord and savior jesus i believe you died on the cross and i believe you rose again on the third day so that i could be saved thank you father god for doing this for me in jesus mighty name i pray amen all right you guys if you pray that prayer and you believe that prayer that holy spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption um and um, no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus when he comes to redeem his church. Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth. And he's going to do just that. Amen. One of the things that Christ wanted us to do and not forsake was the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Go out, find a church home, find other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God, as well as go out and tell other people. Um, 
about Christ. Amen. Um, also, um, go out and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, you guys, take care and be blessed.